school teacher. And now he is a teacher educator and researcher at the University of Vescula in Finland. His main topics are continuing professional development of educators, induction of teachers, and qualitative and action research. His presentation focuses on one of the most important issues of EPO, what makes good practitioner research. And if you think you can lay down and just listen and just consume, then you will because his presentation will be very interactive. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, a warm applause for Hallo Hekin. Thank you very much indeed. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here to have a keynote. Uh, do you think it's time for a keynote? <laughs> Is it all this? Are you sure? Are you really sure? Are you really sure you are in the right place now? Because when people make their decisions about listening to a keynote presentation or doing something else, they don't always have two options. You always can answer yes or no. And I think some people answer also no. And also they answer no for very good reasons. At least myself, when I'm looking at uh, conference programs and when I see a oh, keynote presentation, very often I think this is perfect time for meeting people somewhere else than here. I mean, somewhere where the keynote session is. Uh, because I think it's a wonderful uh, opportunity to talk about practitioner research or whatever you are interested about somewhere else. Or you also could do something else. You can choose prepare my own presentation because I'm a little bit busy on all that. Or some people might think that there are not too many emails to be sorted out. So that is one good option. But actually, you can do it here as well. <laughs> no problem. Uh, some people think when they read the conference program that this is a perfect timing for to listen. But you haven't chosen this. And probably, well, we all have made a purposeful decision to say yes. Yes, we want to participate in the keynote session. And when I am looking at conference programs, there may be two reasons to participate in a keynote. One option is that there is an interesting speaker, but today it's not. <laughs> I must say, that's impossible. Because today the speaker is not at all interesting. It must be about the topic. I think we all are interested about practitioner research. And especially what is good, brackets, practitioner research. So that is the reason why we all are here today. I'm very happy of that because I am interested about that issue. I'm not saying that I have the answer to that question. But I would love to talk with you, to discuss with you what makes good practitioner research. And actually there are two, uh, two questions remaining. What action, whatever is practitioner research? And then the other question is, whatever is good research? So this is what we are here for today. And I'm very happy and I'm very proud of being here. Because I think I'm a practitioner. What else I am? I want to, uh, to say a couple of words about myself. This picture perhaps shows you that I am a father. And I'm very happy and proud of being a father. I am also Finn. I'm coming from Finland. And when I made my decision to come to this conference, I have two options. To stay in Finland, cold, dark, <laughs> rain. Oh. It was very easy to answer yes. I want to be in silence and sleep. Uh, what, what else? As I told you, I'm a good teacher. Really. Honestly, I'm a primary school teacher. I've been working as a primary school teacher for 10 years of my life. 
Then I started to ask who actually I am. It was not about getting fed up with teaching. I loved that job and I still love. But I was thinking how to how to make the most of the rest of my life. Then I started something called practitioner research. Well, actually I called it action research. I started to develop my work. And after that, I started to write about developing my work. And then I started to write about action research and something else. Then I found myself as being a teacher educator and kind of, I would say, researcher. Also, I would also say I'm kind of philosopher. In, in all these conferences, I found myself surrounded by philosophers for some reason. I don't know the reason why, because I have no formal education as a philosopher. But I just love the thing. I would say I'm a hangout philosopher or a wannabe good philosopher. And I will always be, even the time when I was working as a class teacher, a primary school teacher. So, this is what I am. I'm very interested about you. Actually, who you really are. I'm making um, a proposal now. Probably we should not sit all the time because uh, at least in Finland we have had a very, very hard discussion about how dangerous it is to sit too long. It is not good for your health. Uh, did you know that all the people who have the habit of sitting every day will die? <laughs> all of them. So, you should break the inactivated moment by standing or moving or something else. Uh, at least once in every 20 minutes. So that is the critical time for sitting. So, don't sit for 20 minutes. And this lesson has been designed so that you actually can't sit longer. And first, uh, I'm inviting you to introduce yourselves, so I'm asking the question from you, which of you are <coughs> practitioners? Please stand up. If you think you are a practitioner, <laughs> okay, so many, so many practitioners here. Uh, say hello to somebody. <laughs> And 
each of you are mothers. <laughs>
But I'm very curious to, to have some more broad discussion now. So uh, the question was, uh, are there any, any other uh, expressions for doing practitioner research? And uh, uh, you can just say, just say it or shout, just a word, please. Applied, How do you... Applied research? Applied research? Scholarship. What was it? Scholarship. Wow. Okay. What else? Problem solving. Problem solving. Good. Yeah. Useful. Useful. Did you say? Yeah, useful. useful. Okay. What else? Co-creation. Co-creation. Yeah. What else? <coughs> Pardon? Actual research. Somebody says. Yeah. <laughs> Professional development. What else? How do you call that? Practice based research. research. Pardon? Innovation. Innovation. Design, based. Design based research. Inquiry. Inquiry. What kind of inquiry or just inquiry? Practitioner inquiry. Practitioner. Practitioner inquiry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Steve. So I think we are always talking about the same thing. Because these are the expressions which I also heard and something else. To compress uh, from other, so some sources, let's say some literature, what is practitioner research. It's related to actual research or participatory actual research. Some people call it community actual research or design research or uh, uh, research as design. That's one expression. Also, or practitioner led inquiry or practitioner inquiry. And something else. And, and so many different ways to express it. This is based on the literature in Europe, a very, very short and very brief way. But it seems that we have so many different expressions how we name it. Uh, but anyway, we are always talking about the same thing. How to make things better, how to improve things. Uh, it's about the dual role as a practitioner and a researcher. Uh, of course, it's the critical thing is the relationship between the researcher and those being uh, uh, participants. Or if that is the same person, it, it is, it's also possible. The purpose is to advance or to develop practices. Uh, it is collective uh, in, a nature, in nature. It uses varying methods, so there, there is no such methodology for uh, uh, practitioner research, but there are different methodologies. But uh, anyway, uh, I think that these uh, four approaches are very in a key role when, when we define what is practitioner research. Actual research, design research in different forms, narrative inquiry and practice theory. And as I understand what is what and what, is, what are they for, actual research and design research are what I think they are research for practice, to make the practice better. Practice theory instead is more about research about practice. So what practice is, uh, how is it constituted, how is it unfolded, how is it enabled and constrained, how practice is configured. This is about practice theory. Uh, actual research is more about to develop social practices and originally Design research was about designing physical material products, but it has been applied in, uh, within the social realm as well, lately. Narrative inquiry, what about that? Actually, my personal turn was from action research into narrative inquiry, and the natural way for me was that when I was doing action research, and I was thinking how to report 
actual research, how to tell what I have been doing, it was self-evident for me that actually I am telling a story, I am telling a narrative about what happened in my school and what happened next. And it was kind of uh, writing out the plot of developing practices. So I would say narrative inquiry is closely related to practice-oriented research. It's about telling a temporal narrative about developing practices. So then we should ask about the knowledge, the nature of knowledge of, of this kind of research. And I think now we are entering some of the very fundamental things in practitioner research. What is the knowledge like? And I'm afraid we have to go back to very, very old things. And this must be very, very, uh, uh, many of you must know this already. But as we also know that repetitio mater studiorum Repetition is the mother of learning. Uh, some patience, please, for those who already know this. But I think this is worth taking with us. So this is this comes from Aristotle. Uh, Aristotle thinks that, or well, he was writing about different forms of knowledge, and uh, these are the different forms: episteme, techne, and Promises. And then when we ask what people actually do or what gods are to do, Theoria is something for the gods. They see the cosmos from the perspective of, uh, you know, they are all about there and they see the reality as, as it is. And if a human being wants to be kind of God like, kind of if a human being wants to be more divine than just a human being, he tries to do the best to achieve that kind of perspective, a God-like perspective to the world. That is about theoria, which is the origin of the word theory, of course. Then, this kind of knowledge, which is called techne, is uh, being visible in activities and actions by human beings when they produce things, when they make things, material products. Uh, this, the knowledge form of phronesis is being visible through praxis, which is that if you have phronesis, you have to, the ability to live a good life, to act well, to <coughs> do good and virtuous things in social life. So the ideal aim for episteme or theoria is to uh, develop some knowledge which is atemporal, universal, certain, eternal, general and abstract. That kind of knowledge is uh, the kind of ideal aim of theory. The aim of uh, poiesis is to improve the ability of produce products and act in the material world. I think many of the university, universities of applied sciences uh, are rooted in that kind of understanding of knowledge. So the make things better, I mean, in the, in the very material meaning of the word. The ideal aim of uh, praxis is to act in the right way, for the right reasons, and at the right time. When we take a look at the interest of these different uh, forms of knowledge, we can see that Episteme is not instrumental. It's not directed towards an external end, but it serves as an end in itself. The same is true for praxis. It is also non instrumental. But, technically, is instrumental, so the goal is 
to produce something. And it's kind of outside of the practice. Uh, yeah. I'm following here a uh, Danish scholar, Dune Solstad, who has proposed that uh, probably we can, we can call this theoretical knowledge as sectator knowledge. It comes from the epistemological, uh, I mean the etymological origin, the gods from Olympus, Mount. They see about all the world. They are spectators. Whereas the people, the human beings, the more mortal people, they are within the practices, the activities and actions. They are the people, they are the who are doing the things. They are participants. And this is what Solstra calls participant knowledge. And it's, it's crucial to understand that both Tecne and Phronesis are this, this, kind of, this kind of knowledge, participant knowledge. And as uh, Solstad says, practical forms of knowledge exist in their own right and with their own characteristics. It is that the field of practice is neither devoid of knowledge nor equal to theoretical knowledge, which is merely transferred into practical knowledge. So they are completely different realms. And that has something to do with the discussion about theory and practice. Actually, Solstad is making this proposal to replace the eternal debate between theory and practice with these concepts, spectator knowledge, uh, instead of theory, and participant knowledge instead of practice. So, what is then good practitioner research made of? How to make judgments about the goodness of practitioner research? Um, I think we need different conceptual tools for this because the the concepts which are normally used in the traditional paradigm, the validity and reliability, are rooted in the, theory, in the idea of theory and spectator knowledge. So if we are talking about the goodness of practitioner research, we actually can't use these concepts anymore. I have to make a personal confession. My wife is doing her master studies in the uh, University of Applied Sciences. They have a wonderful course on methodology of research. And I think I learned much when I was kind of following in the kitchen table what she was doing. Then there was a question right about validity and reliability of this research. 